Republican or Democrat? Funny Valentine was the 23rd president of the United States of America. A little thing that always bothered me about Steel Ball Run is we never actually get to learn which party Funny Valentine belonged to. Which is why today I wanted to settle this once and for all. Which political party did President Funny Valentine belong to? The Democrats or the Republicans? First, we need a quick lesson on American politics. Hey, you guys are the one who clicked on this video, not me. The Republicans and the Democrats are the two largest political parties in the US of A. The Republicans represent the right-winged folk, while the Democrats represent the left-winged folk. If you want to know where you'd fall on the spectrum, the political spectrum, I can't help you on the other ones, you'll find a political compass quiz in the description below. Now, a very basic understanding of right versus left, and when I say basic, I mean very <laughs> basic is that the left in any country typically wants to push through reform and change while the right attempts to halt reform or even roll back reforms to how things used to be. Again, that's like super simplified. Please don't use any of this on a test or something. A very important aspect when determining which party Valentine belonged to is that the Democrats and the Republicans of the 1800s are completely different from the parties they are today. In the 1800s, it was the Republicans who were the progressive left-wing party, while the Democrats were the right-winged party. To put it simply, the two biggest parties in America just swapped names. Why did the two parties flip ideologies? I'm not your teacher, this is a JoJo video. If I were to say Funny Valentine was a Democrat, what I mean is he would have been a modern day Republican and vice versa. Got it? Good. Now let's look at what type of President Valentine was. This is where determining Valentine's party got tough. Because believe it or not, we unfortunately don't ever get a chapter of Valentine lining out his presidential plan for the next term. Nah, he was too busy trying to get Jesus inside of him. All throughout the story of Steel Ball Run, we do get little hints here and there, giving us insight into not only what type of President Valentine was, but also what he values in his nation. First off, let's look at real American history. As we know in Steel Ball Run, Mr. Funny Stuart Valentine was elected as the 23rd president of the United States of America. But who was the 23rd president in our history? The 23rd president of America was Benjamin Harris, a Republican. I was trying to find some kind of parallels to draw between Valentine and Harris, but considering we don't know much about Valentine's policies, it's kind of hard. But simply knowing who Valentine replaced in history is a huge clue in itself. How I see it, American history in JoJo probably played out the same way as it did in real life. I'm sure you all know of the butterfly effect, how one little change can prompt a much larger change later down the line. If American history in JoJo were to play out relatively similar to our history, then Valentine's administration must have at least been somewhat similar to Harris's administration. This way, the history events in both JoJo and real life would have played out relatively the same way. I mean, for corpse sake, they both even fought in the American Civil War. Mm. Well, actually, Valentine could have been the exact opposite of Harris, and American history could have course cracked itself later down the line. All right, nerd. That's true, I guess. So we should look for more evidence to determine Valentine's party. So what else do we know? Valentine's personal bodyguard was a black man. I, I swear this is relevant. You are trying to tell me that in the 1800s, the president of the United States of America appointed a black man to be his personal bodyguard. All right, time out, I'm calling BS. And I'm not just targeting one party here, I'm targeting both parties. Even if Valentine himself was a super devout equal rights advocate, I still think there is no way the White House would allow a black man to be the president's personal bodyguard. But this fact alone does give us more evidence supporting Valentine being a Republican. Back in ye old days of America, the Democrats were the slave owners party. Now don't get that twisted, a lot of Republicans today use that fact against the Democrats, which is ironic because like I said before, the Democrats of the 1800s became the modern day Republicans. Anyways, 
If there is a snowflake's chance in hell that the 23rd president of America's personal bodyguard would be allowed to be black, it would have to be a Republican president. I don't know, man. So far, Valentine's looking pretty Republican, not gonna lie. But then things got tricky. And that trickiness came from the symbolism behind D4C Love Train. I'm not gonna explain everything about D4C and Love Train because it's not relevant. But what is relevant is the symbolism behind the American president using an ability to make himself prosper at the expense of all those poor children in China and India. Now, I don't know about you, but I think Iraqi might have been trying to say something here about American politics. That's right, all American politicians are evil. Just like the almost 70% of you guys who watch my videos but don't subscribe. Yes, I'm talking to you. Don't think I don't see you, Derek. The idea that Americans can enjoy their cushy lifestyle at the expense of cheap child labor in countries like China and India is a very decisive topic. One way to combat this situation from happening is through economic protectionism. Listen guys, I'm a fan of the Victoria series, okay? I know what I'm talking about. Typically, in America, the right wing is more anti-protectionism, while the left wing is more for protectionism. Again, this is all incredibly oversimplified. Please do not use this on your exams. D4C Love Train is an ability that benefits Valentine the exact same way free trade benefits Americans. All of the fortune gathers towards America, and all the misfortune gets redirected towards the less fortunate in other countries. Valentine, a man who seemingly cares a lot about America and the American people, doesn't seem too bothered about what happens to the people in the rest of the world. This in itself also ties into the idea of American isolationism. The idea that Americans should only worry about themselves and not the rest of the world. Valentine is fine creating a world where Americans can prosper, even if it means everyone else pays the price. I always assumed American isolationism is a right-winged policy because of the recent Trump campaign. But as I actually do more research into the topic, yeah, it kind of seems isolationism is neither right-winged or left-winged. American isolationism is a policy that a lot of American presidents have adopted. Both the Republicans and the Democrats have had isolationist presidents. And again, you have to remember that this isn't 2023 America, this is 1890 America. American isolationism was very trendy at the time. It doesn't matter if Valentine was a Republican or a Democrat. He would have been an isolationist either way. With that being said, President Funny Stuart Valentine. Was he a member of the Democrats or was he a member of the Republicans? After my research, I have come to the conclusion that Funny Valentine was a Republican. What, were you expecting a twist? This is just my interpretation of his character based on the research I did. This is all speculation. But if I look at what little evidence we do have, Valentine being a Republican makes a lot more sense to me than Valentine being a Democrat. Remember, although Valentine was a Republican in 1890, if he had existed today, he would have been a part of the Democrats. Which honestly surprised me, because he does remind me a lot more of Trump than Sleepy Joe. Like, come on, I can't be the only one who got some serious MAGA vibes from Valentine, right? He is literally trying to make America great again with the corpse of Jesus Christ. Man, that sentence probably sounded really weird for anyone who got this far in the video without even knowing what a JoJo is. Before I made this video, I probably would have guessed he was a right-winged president, but now it makes more sense if he was part of the left. Also, I can't believe you guys just made me read some boring-ass Wikipedia articles about some old fart president in two political parties from a country I'm not even from. I know politics can be a bit of a touchy subject, so if I've offended you in any way, like... I'm literally talking about a Japanese comic book about big buff gay guys who use breathing techniques to kill vampires. Calm down. I have been Chewy Dog One, and you have been my gracious viewer. As president of the Chewy Dog One YouTube channel, I humbly request you subscribe before you take your leave and never see me again. Alright, bye gamer.